Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Count Christo and Aurora has been updated. 2.2.0 has come out. It's an awesome patch. Here's the release notes. It's good stuff. So it's not the release notes, that's just the patch file. Here's the release notes. Such a good change. So many good changes. Let's dive into it real quick. So <clears throat> I have updated the mod. The mod still works. I have updated the download instructions. So if you want to play Aurora, um, you can use my GitHub, which gives you the instructions of how to download it, how to patch Aurora, how to uh, get that all running the way that I do in my Let's Plays. <clears throat> but let's talk a little bit about this patch and dive straight into it. No messing about. So here are the changes. We're not going to go through all of them. Um, I'm just going to highlight some of them. The link to this will be in the description. I will caution you on one thing though. If you want to dive in and play Aurora on the new patch, I would recommend, as Steve always does, uh, wait like, uh, sorry, I'm going to music playing, wait like um, three or four days, <clears throat> just in case there are any big bugs that need to get fixed. You don't want to start a big campaign just to have to start it over again in not very long. So here are the major changes. There's a whole bunch of things that have been fixed, which is good. The ones that jump out at me in here is that reassign admin commands actually does reassign admin commands rather than just planetary governance now, which is good. There's a bug I came across in my campaign very recently. There's a bunch of other good bug fixes in here, which are really, really nice. Now there's some minor changes, um, and then there's some big changes which we'll go into. Significant performance improvements. It's one of the sexy ones, which I am looking forward to trying out and seeing how well that works. And then this is another really, really important one. After a shipping line has built 10 ships, it will no longer build small ships. After it's built 20, it will only build very large ships. This is going to dramatically improve the uh, performance. Dramatically. Approximately, based on my testing, 95% of tick calculation lag, not interrupt lag, which is a, not really lag, it's a different thing, but 95% uh, of the lag comes from civilian ships. So condensing them down into smaller, not smaller numbers of larger ships, oh, it's such a good change. I'm absolutely thrilled for this. It means I'm no longer gonna have to, going to have to use an auto hotkey script to uh, delete civilian ships. It's so, so good. It's gonna let our civilian economies really flourish because previously you essentially had to delete them. Otherwise your game would slow to a crawl. Um, now that you're allowed to let them flourish and grow big, we're gonna be able to do way more shipping stuff around with civilians. It's a fantastic, fantastic change. And so simple, such a simple, elegant solution. I love Steve, man. Uh, some other cool stuff in here. The fleet history tab now shows movement in reverse order. So the last latest executed orders are at the top, which makes sense, easier to read. Um, it's all it's all good stuff in here, um, but I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything. There's some stuff about radiation. Supernovas, this is a cool new feature. You can basically cause a star system to blow up and it then like blasts all the nearby planets and things. It's uh, it's not something that will happen organically. Or maybe it would be funny if they made it so it can happen organically, but like on a realistic probability. So it's like fantastically unlikely that you find a star just on the edge of supernova. Anyway, yeah, you can blow up a star, which um, it damages the, um, the connections between stars, I think, as well as um, depending on how much atmosphere planets have, it can basically just kill everyone on board. Civilian ship scrapped event has been added. This is very useful. Looking forward to using that. So they've changed how damage control works. Like I said, I'm not going to go through everything here, but I want to show you the ones that I think are really important. Um, oh yeah, and this is one of the ones I didn't touch on above. Large cargo hold is available for everyone to start with and all fuel sizes are available for everyone to start, which is good because it just means you can design your ships the way you want right out of the gate. You don't have to kind of keep counting for the fact that you've got, oh, I've got bigger, bigger fuel things, change this up. It's very nice. Large cryo transport have been added, um, which is very nice. You can design templates. This isn't the stuff I'm really interested in. This is important. So now you get a, uh, it's not just how many systems you have. You can set a time after how many systems you have before you start getting the various different spoiler races. That is the invaders, raiders, and swarm. Um, so you can get those triggering a little bit later, which means it's not quite as immediate when you when you first discover X number of systems, depending on what you've set that to, which makes sense. Um, this, I don't quite understand, but essentially it's improved the way you assign weapons to um, weapon control systems. What are they called? Fire control systems, uh, which is going to be really nice. Uh, ground force stuff, not really the most interesting to me. This is great. 
you can now add you can now tell your tankers to go and refuel a fleet rather than having to move them to the fleet and then telling the other fleet to refuel from stationary tankers really nice little quality of life change exactly the kind of thing that steve knocks out of the park uh, ground force stuff, ground force stuff, ground force stuff, ground force stuff, instant build stuff, load template stuff, particle beam sizes have changed, I haven't really used those much. You can now see what you can refit to, which makes this tool a little bit less strictly needed, but that's still, it's still going to be useful, don't get me wrong. Uh, this is nice to be able to see it in game, you can see uh, whether you can convert from one thing to the other and what percentage of the original cost it would take you, which is pretty nice. Now this, oh baby this, you can now see... Uh, your M on the Empire Mining, this screen used to suck, um, but now you can see total production of each thing happening each month, and it then shows you where that production is happening. Really, really, really good change. Very, very happy with that one. Uh, combat comparison, not that interested, not that interested. Fractional warheads is going to be interesting to play with. You can basically have um, like multiple warheads on... Uh, on one missile and then point defense changes we'll get into this in a second but this is one of the huge changes we're not going to talk about it just here <clears throat> new missile guidance options so you can get your missiles to behave smarter laser warheads they detonate at a certain range from the target and then act like they're one fire of a beam weapon which could be really interesting so they could be really really hard to stop because they um you know they have the range of a missile but the uh you know, the accuracy and the uh, ability to punch through point defense of a laser. So you'd need to have really, lo let's say this laser warhead detonated, whatever, 200,000 kilometers from your ship. You need to have 200,000 kilometer point defense to shoot down this missile before it hit your ships. Or you need to have a screening force in front of your main force shooting down these incoming laser warheads. Such a cool change. This is gonna, this is gonna be a game changer, especially when we consider some stuff that's coming on uh, in the next bit. So new point defense mechanics, and I'm going to explain it to you, but you should read this because it's it's complicated. The short version is that in the past, point defense knew whether, let's say it has three shots available and two incoming missiles. In the past, it would fire shot one at missile one, and then if it destroyed it, it would fire shot two at missile two, and if it destroyed it, it wouldn't shoot point, uh, shot three. Now, you have to decide ahead of time what you're doing with your point defense. Do you want to shoot three at one do you want to shoot one at one and two at two well two at one and one at two or do you want to shoot um one just one at each and leave one to deal with any other missiles that might be involved so you have to choose your missiles per target um which is interesting so attacks per inbound should be interesting and yeah your anti-missile defense how many missiles do you want to fire per incoming missile and the way it basically works now is you're gonna see a lot more uh leakage just penetrating through because let's say you had 100 missiles coming in and 500 shots right you'd probably want to set that up to fire five shots per target right so you shoot five shots per target and let's say you're hitting your shots uh 25 of the time before that 25 percent hit rate means you're going to need an average of 400 shots to deal with those 100 missiles you're going to probably deal with all of them basically, because the maths evens out. Yes, okay, maybe you miss a missile five times in a row, once or twice, but that doesn't matter because you have more shots coming in and you're also going to hit one three times in a row at some other point. So it all kind of evens out, resulting in a complete hit rate on all those incoming missiles. Now you're firing five shots at each incoming missile, which means probably, which means if you miss five shots in a row, that missile got through. End of story right it's not that you have other shots in reserve that you can now use to take out that missile that missile just got through so it's going to be much harder to create a complete point defense barrier and there's going to be much more incentive to build layered point defense especially when you consider there are now standoff missiles missiles that detonate at some distance from you which means you don't necessarily just want to be doing final defensive fire the whole time which is now called point blank defensive fire it looks like this is a long description of how that works, technically speaking, but basically, if you understand what I've just said, that's most of what you need to know for now, I think. Once we get in there and testing, I'm sure it'll get more complicated, but for now, the important thing to know is your point defense is no longer psychic. It no longer knows which of its shots missed, so it can then calculate further shots. But close-in weapon systems, I believe, still behave the way they used to before. So now, to me, they have much more of a place, which is gonna be interesting. ECM has changed. <clears throat> Basically, it's been split. So you now have 
um, no increase in size from ECM on fire controls. It just makes them more expensive. Uh, and then the way that they work is split. So you used to just have ECM. Now you have jammer, sen sensor jammer, fire control jammer, and missile jammer. Sensor jammers make you harder to spot. Fire control jammers make you harder to shoot. And missile jammers make missile. What do they actually do to missiles in the attack? Shh, I forget what you actually do to a missile. Uh, ECM. Right, it gives a penalty to makes you harder to hit with missiles, essentially. And fire control jammers. Actually, what if fire control jammers, presumably they make it you. Do they make you harder to hit or do they make the range shorter? I'm not sure, actually. Uh, da, 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 da. Fire control jammers degrade the short range tracking systems used by beam fire controls. Right, so you're going to be less able to shoot down um, incoming missiles. Makes sense. Uh, and then missile jammers disrupt the fire controlling onboard systems of attacking missiles. Cool. So there's more to read in there, but whoops. But uh, some cool changes to electronic warfare. We're definitely going to play with that more. Missile decoys. So this is interesting. So now when you fire a missile, you can have it, like as it gets close to its target, spit out decoys. And then depending on how good the relative ECM of the, the two ships fighting are, or potentially the two missiles fighting are, actually, I'm not certain. Yeah, the EEC, ECM on the missile versus the ECM on the, um, the ship, you will essentially make the decoys look to the enemy more or less like real incoming missiles, which they need to shoot at. And again, it's going to make point defense harder. Um, then multiple warhead missiles. We talked about this a little bit earlier. I think I mentioned that in the wrong bit, but that's okay. Um, you can set a minimum anti-missile missile range, which means if you want to try and create this kind of layered defense, you can make sure your anti-missile missiles, for being the longest weapon in your anti-missile arsenal, rely on that outer range, which makes sense. Now, this is a big one. Basically, the way the NPRs change their ships has totally changed. They're going to be way more varied, and in all likelihood, perhaps after things shake out, they're going to be much, much better at designing ships, which is going to be really cool. Now here's decoy missiles. This is kind of like the opposite of um, uh, whatever they're called, missile decoys. Where was, where was the other one? What were they called again? Yeah, so missile decoys and then there's decoy missiles. Missile decoys look like missiles to anti, uh, to point defense. Decoy missiles look like ships to missiles. So you could make it such that you have a, uh, you basically trick enemy weapon systems into targeting your decoy missiles instead. Huge shakeup to the warfare, which is great. This is another huge change. Genetic modification is finally in. You can modify a species temperature range, base temperature, base oxygen level, and base gravity. Now, base temperature, base oxygen level, and base gravity, you change as a, uh, as a function of where they started, and then temperature range, uh, either above or below. And temperature range, you just increase the range. So obviously, it seems like these, unless you find a planet that's like super cold, typically I think you're just going to be wanting to crank up the temperature range as much as you can. But it does take a while because you have to build, um, where are they, genetic modification sensors, which start with a base rate of 500,000 people being modified per year. So it's not very many. You do have to do quite a few of those. Ground formation stuff, tractor rules stuff, uh, ship templates mean you can copy from one uh, race to another if you're playing like that. Grouping wrecks, this is a really good one. We were seeing wrecks become a bit insane in our previous game, so that's going to be pretty nice. Uh, you can detect, uh, get an event when you detect wrecks from a different species when you weren't the one that destroyed them. Um, what else? Yes, yeah, so spoilers for the raiders here, but basically when the... Dark Eldar jump through a gate, they can't jump back through for a number of seconds equal to the tonnage of all the military ships in the fleet plus 10% of the tonnage of commercial ships in the fleet. And we were seeing Dark Eldar fleets of, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons. That's a long time that they're stuck in the system, which means it's going to be easier to kill them. They're not able to just kind of bounce in and out of the system on those gates, which is going to be really good. Designated targets makes it easier for you to uh, do... Uh, firing range practice on your own ships and they've changed ground combat research costs. The big ones in here are of course the point defense changes, the introduction of genetic modification, and then on the quality of life side, the massive reduction in lag, which is going to be amazing, and the um, the empire mining. I really like the empire mining. That's Aurora 2.2.0. I think what I will actually do is not release this video for like four or five days, so you won't be tempted to start your campaign early. By the time this video comes out, go and check 
the uh, C sharp page, which is C sharp installation. And this one, if there have been updates, it will probably be listed here. If not, just check this board, C sharp installation. And I, it's very likely that by the time I put this video out, and let's say I'll do it in five days, 2.2.1, 2.2.2 2 .2 might be out and you'll want to start from there. Thank you for watching. Enjoy Aurora. There oh yes, I should mention, there will be a new series of Aurora coming. The previous one is going to end here because there's so many great changes in here, but I will do a farewell video going over the previous one. There's, uh, you're watching this in five days, which means there is one episode of the series has come out. There are two more main episodes of the previous series to come out after this video, and then there'll be a farewell video, and then we'll get into the next series. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.